Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the um, Migrate Your Observability and Search Solutions to Amazon Open Search. Um, I'm just going to give it a minute or so for everybody to join in. Uh, but while I'm doing that, I just wanted to, you know, say we're we're going to talk through Open Search today and talk about some, uh, you know, different solutions that we've done. Uh, you know, what to look forward to in this. You know, we're going to have an introduction. We're going to talk about who the speakers are here that are with us today. Um, I'm Marty, Marty Newhart, and I'm just going to kind of be your MC. Uh, and then from there, we, um, we'll continue on and we'll hand it over to Francisco and then Krishna, and they'll work through some stuff. So what we're going to do today, right, we're going to, you know, talk a bit about Mission. We're, um, you know, Krishna and I are from Mission Cloud Services. Uh, so we're going to, you know, talk through that, um, what Mission is, uh, why we're here, um, and who the speakers are. Then we'll um, have a presentation from Francisco, and then we'll get back to trends and challenges and in data integration. Um, you know, be able to migrate, op how to migrate Amazon Open Search, um, the discovery, design, implement, and validate phases of that. Uh, so that's that's really what we're going to be covering today. I'm, uh, Marty Newhard, I'm a consulting manager at Mission. Um, Francisco, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Francisco Gonzalez, and I manage the Open Search uh, Partner Program. Hey everyone. Uh, I'm Krishna. I'm a big data consultant at Mission uh, Data Analytics and Machine Learning Practice. Awesome. Um, so you know, before we go on, can you just go to the next slide, Krishna? So uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about mission here, uh, and then we're going to hand it off to Francisco, um, so he can talk to you about you know some different challenges and customer use cases and things like that with um, Open Search. So mission is uh, Amazon Web Services premier tier services partner. Uh, what that means is is there's you know thousands of partners that are out there for um, Amazon. Uh, a premier tier means that there's only about 60 of those, and Mission is one of those. Uh, around these sorts of things, we have a lot of competencies. Um, you know, one that we'll call out here is the data and analytics competency. So we're we're good at helping out with data and analytics uh, projects, and we also have a lot of AWS designations. And one of those is around Open Search. So you know, we have a lot of experience on Open Search here, um, and you know, Krishna will be able to talk with you through that. Um, so with that, I'll actually hand it off to Francisco um, for his portion of the presentation. Uh, Francisco, go ahead and take it away. Thanks. Thank you. Um, let me share my screen. Uh, I think you need to make me presenter in order for me to uh, share my screen. So um, there we go. So let me share my screen and I believe that uh, you see my screen now is that correct yes we yes. can see it thanks per perfect okay so hello and welcome everyone to uh, this webinar uh, my name is Francisco Gonzalez and I manage the partner program for Amazon Open Source Service uh, I'm very happy to be here with Mission Cloud uh, working with Mission Cloud is always a pleasure they're very strong with open search and uh, open search migrations. So we have a very busy agenda, but very interesting. First, we're going to provide you with an overview of the Amazon Open Source Service. The Amazon Open Source Service is the managed service for the open source community project. So we're going to cover both the Amazon Open Source Service and the community project, including uh, benefits, features, and use cases. Then we're going to cover the reasons why customers are looking to migrate to Amazon Open Search uh, service. Uh, this is key because it will provide you with information about why Open Source Service is a great offering for log analytics, observability, security, and search workloads. And then we will go over the migration process. We have a six step process that starts with planning, then a proof of concept, and hopefully ends up with a a completed and successful migration to Amazon Open Source Service. So let's start. Um, so why Open Search? Um, these two are the two main use cases. Um, so uh, log analytics and observability is about management of human and machine uh, or system generated data. It may be a structured or semi-structured data, and data may be coming from websites, applications, 
uh, systems networking, social networks, IoT, and so on. You may need to correlate these logs with other metrics and traces or business insights, and also use advanced features such as machine learning or anomaly detection. Common samples are performance and security monitoring and uh, alerting for auditing purposes and also for security purposes. Then is search and full text search. Our applications require very fast, very fast and uh, real-time search at scale, so uh, with relevant results for structured and semi-structured data. Uh, this use case includes uh, a document portal, an e-commerce, or machine learning for personalized recommendations. So um, let's now talk about the open search, open source community project. So we have the open source project, and then we have the Amazon Open Source Service. Again, Amazon Open Source Service is the managed service for the open search community project. So let's talk a little bit now about the open search community project. The open search is a community driven open source project for search and analytics, and it's a fork of Elasticsearch 7.10. So about a year ago, Amazon wanted to invest heavily in the futures of Elasticsearch, but they didn't have the right licensing. So they decided to fork and invest heavily so they are able to provide new functionality uh, to customers. Amazon is committed to the project, but other large organizations such as Oracle, they're also contributing to this project. Open Search has advanced features and the team is releasing new features uh, every quarter. Some of the advanced features include uh, high cardinality, anomaly detection, trace analytics, open search dashboards, and also the observability plugin and the security plugin. Um, okay, let me see. There we go. Uh, so the, um, the, um, the open source project is 100% open source, and this means a lot. So you as a customer can see, review, change, improve, monetize uh, the code, and this is very relevant. Uh, so you can build solutions on top of open search without paying for a license. It's community driven, meaning that any individual or team can contribute and influence the roadmap. And this really captures the market and customer needs because it reacts faster to the market trends. And it's enterprise ready. Since Amazon is pushing for this community project and they have a managed service on top of it, this is based on the experience of working with tens of thousands of customers that are using uh, the managed service. So um, it's now time to talk about the managed service. So this is Amazon Open Source Service. This is what customers are buying from Amazon. So um, the managed service includes the Open Search project and Open Search dashboards, and it also supports previous version of Elasticsearch and Kibana. So we have the community project, and then we have the Amazon Open Source Service. Amazon Open Source Service enables you to easily ingest, secure, aggregate, view, and analyze data at multi petabyte scale without the operational cost of having to manage your own clusters. This is key because you can scale up to three petabytes and 200 nodes in one single cluster. If for some reason you need more, you can have a second cluster and there is some cross cluster capabilities. So you really get uh, management and scalability with the Amazon Open Source Service. So let's cover now the benefits of Amazon Open Source Service and why customers are migrating to, to the service. So the, the, the main reason for using Open Search is because of the functionality you had and the new functionality that um, Amazon is and, and the community project is, is bringing to you. That includes the observability plugin and the security plugin. But from a managed service perspective, the three main reasons are uh, management and scalability. As I said, you can scale up to 200 nodes and three petabytes um, in a few minutes. And this is very important because the existing installation of log analytics and search on-prem or maybe self-managed in the cloud doesn't scale or is very hard to scale. So many customers are coming to open source service because their log data is growing exponentially and they need a solution that scales. 
Another reason why they're migrating to OpenSearch is price performance. With Graviton processors, you get about 44% better uh, price performance. You also have ultra warm and color storage that gives you another 90% potential cost reduction. So this on top of the managed service being an Amazon native service, so it gets the best pricing, uh, provides you with really high price performance compared to, to other vendors and our customers are migrating because they do see the price performance uh, in open search. And then is security and compliance. I mean, and this is an Amazon service, so you can rest assured knowing that you have the latest security, uh, key management service for encryption, Cognito, 24 seven monitoring of your cluster, and you are also in compliance with many uh, regulations and, and so on, such as FedRAM and, and SOC. So let's compare and talk a little bit about the difference between on-prem, self-managed, and then using the Amazon Open Source Service. So in the right, we have the scenario uh, for you using the managed service. In this case, Amazon takes care of everything. So you only need to worry about your business, the application, the functionality, and we take care of, of everything. If instead, uh, right in the middle, you're using EC2, that is Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, uh, that is when you are installing and doing the management of open search. So in this case, Amazon takes care of the hardware and the operative systems, uh, the power, the networking, the building security, and so on. If instead, in the left, uh, you wanna go on-prem, uh, here you need to take care of everything. Uh, so hardware, operative system, building security, cooling, networking, and, and so on. So at the end, on the right, Amazon Open Source Service gives you uh, the most comprehensive solution to write your open search workloads uh, with scale, security, and price performance. So let's talk a little bit about uh, price performance. Uh, one of the reasons we get really good price performance in the managed service is because since May 2021, it supports Graviton processors. Now we have Graviton 3, so this slide is a little bit outdated, but we see about 44 better price performance when using Graviton processors in the managed service. Um, let me let me see oh, one second. Okay, everything good. Um, now, um, in terms of the type of workloads, so uh, we see about 38% in indexing, 50% less in latency, and about 40% increase in query performance. So this is a significant improve. Another way of uh, bringing price performance is by leveraging ultra warm codes, ultra warm nodes, uh, and cold storage. So ultra warm nodes provide you with 90% cost reduction. Ultra warm nodes are using S3 and a sophisticated cache solution. It only supports reads in S3. So if you need to write, it will automatically return the index to hot storage. It still has the three petabyte limitation and it has less query performance compared to hot nodes, but the great benefit is that it's transparent for your application and users. So they only see a very small decrease in performance. The most common use case uh, is when you are rarely using historical data. So let's say data older than five years. In that case, you move your historical data to ultra warm nodes, so you get that 90% uh, cost reduction. Another strategy we got is call storage. With call storage, we're using S3 infrequent access. So in this case, data is only available on demand, so this is not transparent to the user. So everything is moved to S3, including the indexes. So uh, if for some reason you want to uh, browse this data, then you will need it to ultra warm or maybe to hot storage if you need to do uh, some writes. Now, if we are talking about uh, security, uh, Amazon Open Source Service is constantly, actively monitoring your clusters. So if, an, if a cluster is not working well, it's a performance issue, but it's also a security issue, Amazon Open Source Service provides automatic replacement of failed nodes. We also don't need to incur in the operational cost of replacing these nodes. Um, on top of that, Amazon Open Source Service supports, uh, this is key, uh, data replication across three availability zones, 
making it very secure. But also, you get cross cluster with cross region uh, replication for active passive. So we have customers with passive replicas in different continents, uh, making the whole experience uh, much faster and uh, providing high availability for your for your end users. Um, so let's switch now to the migration process. And uh, as I said, um, there are many Elasticsearch and some open search workloads running on-prem or self-managed. So by migrating to the Amazon Open Search Service, they'll be able to scale, have price performance, and uh, security, and scalability, and take advantage of all the new functionality. Remember, the observability plugin and the security plugin. There are many other local analytics and search solutions, such as Solar, Splunk, Datadog, and uh, they have the same problem. Growing data volumes, they require scalability, security, price performance, and advanced functionality. Think of it, data is growing exponentially, so if you're talking to a, a, a mid-size or a company or large company, and you ask about what is your luggage expense, they're gonna come and say, storing logs in SQL Server or Oracle, or maybe it's about uh, uh, any other solution such as Elasticsearch uh, uh, on-prem. So um, uh, it's uh, these migrations from these other platforms are happening every day, and many customers are migrating to to, to OpenSearch. Uh, the easiest workloads to migrate are OpenSearch and Elasticsearch running on-prem. Sometimes it's as easy as restoring a as, as restoring a snapshot. In most cases, that's not uh, good enough. There's no way of doing that straightforward. But some other cases, yes, you can go and restore a snapshot. And for customers migrating from Splunk, Solar, or Datadog, the migration process requires a little bit more. But in most cases, um, customers are still migrating to OpenSearch because they see the increased value by leveraging Amazon Open Source Service. So we have a six step process uh, for migrating and it starts with qualify and plan, then doing a proof of concept, deployment, the target uh, environment, doing the data copy, bringing the data copy up to speed, the update sync, and then the swap. So let's go in very high level. This is a very high level webinar here. Um, over these different six steps, so you have a better understanding of the migration process. So let's start with qualify and plan. In the planning section, it includes understanding of key performance indica indicators for the migration, a review of the functionality needed, uh, including uh, version dependencies for plugins. It includes uh, operation and security, uh, we'll also look at sizing in terms of what resources are needed. And we also built a training and adoption plan for IT users, admin users, and also business users. Um, so um, in terms of key performance indicators and business continuity for the migration, we look at questions like, does business revenue depend on your current solution? And this will give you a good idea of how critical this solution is for the business. Uh, then uh, maybe you start building some other key performance indicators for the migrations, such as uh, operational performance, what is the latency expected, input and output, process performance, SLAs, uptime, time to results, and other performance metrics such as how fast search results are populating, or the accuracy of the search results or the business aggregation. So you really need to build your own KPIs uh, in order to understand if the migration is gonna be successful. In terms of uh, sizing, if you're migrating from OpenSearch on-prem or Elasticsearch, then you have a really good understanding of what you're gonna need in terms of CPU, storage, and instance types. It's very, very straightforward. But if you're migrating from other platform, then here is a little bit harder to estimate. We have some uh, rules such as uh, an index with one replica is about 2.5 times the size of the source data. 
or uh, and always leaving about 25% overhead, or that uh, uh, in terms of CPU, uh, 1.5 virtual CPUs per shard with substantial traffic is another uh, good rule. So here is where we help you understand uh, what your end deployment is going to look like. Then as part of the qualify and plan, we also look at functionality. And this is key. Uh, as part of the planning, um, if we are migrating from Elasticsearch, this will be a very simple step since OpenSearch is a fork of Elasticsearch. But in, even in this case, there are some scenarios that require some effort in the migration process. If we are migrating from uh, other log analytics and search solution, there is some further work that needs to be done, understanding how it's used, what is the functionality, and what is the functionality available in the target uh, in the target solution in OpenSearch. As with any migration, there may be some functionality that uh, is different in OpenSearch compared to uh, to uh, to other solutions out there. So sometimes uh, business users may go and say, "Well, these dashboards are a little bit different," but in a few days uh, they may be ready to work with those new dashboards. As with any any migration. Then, Hi, Francisco, we, we do have a couple of uh, questions here. I was thinking it might be a good time to jump in uh, since you're talking about migrations. Uh, do you have a migration plan from TypeSense? Uh, 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 I don't the see questions. the question. It's all right. I, I'm just reading it out to you. Um, do you have a migration plan from TypeSense? So that, that would be something to work with you on it, but there has been migrations from Algolia and TypeSense to Amazon Open Source Service, and uh, we'll be able to populate a plan like we do for other um, search solutions. Um, so there's been some some conversions to Open Search, and uh, our migration plan supports uh, moving from these from these uh, systems. Excellent, thanks. And there is another one to follow on that says, uh, can you compare open search against an in-memory search such as Algolia or ty and TypeSense? I don't know if you have some slides coming up on that one or. I don't, I'm trying to see the question. Um, so uh, open search is based on Lucene and is an inverted index. And it provides lighting fast uh, search for data coming in real time, a structure and an structure. So in this case, we will need to understand what is the performance um, of the current installation, uh, even if it's in memory. Uh, so, uh, and as, as I was mentioning on the qualifying plan, we will need to understand how uh, your performance metrics what your performance metrics are and uh, from my experience we're able to produce those lighting fast results with um, with open search excellent thank you very much i appreciate that you're welcome great do you still see my screen yes perfect for some reason okay audience view okay great 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 so I also see my screen. Let's switch to uh, data ingestion. So this is key for any log analytics and search solution. Uh, the first step is to review uh, in detail the current ingestion framework. Uh, in some case, uh, we may uh, use the same ingestion framework that you currently have. But in many other cases, we may want to modernize the framework by using some of the very powerful platforms of tools that we have, such as Kinesis, Kafka, or uh, the Open Search Integration Service. Okay, so we we may still work with your current ingestion, or we may modernize. It really depends on on um, the business uh, need and also uh, the performance metrics that that you may have. 
Then it's about training and adoption. Um, we always need to build a comprehensive plan for training and adoption for your different teams. Your existing developers need to understand the new solution. So when they build the application, um, everything integrates smoothly. Then is your operations uh, support and security teams. Amazon Open Source Service is a managed service, so your team will have a lot less to do compared to when running self-managed or on-prem, uh, but you still need to train your users. And then it's your business team, your business users, and this is the key part. If your business users are using the dashboards, are using the search capabilities or the anomaly detection, they need to be trained for the new user interface and how things work in the new, in the new system. Perfect. And finally, we move to the proof of concept. Uh, during the proof of concept, we validate the key functionality. We build the run books and uh, uh, review integrations and so on. We also review the budget to make sure that everything is aligned with the uh, planning. The sooner we discover issues, the better. The result of the proof of concept is a validated plan to execute the migration. Then we switch to the deploy phase. And here uh, we execute the deployment scripts, review security, monitoring, and alerts. We perform a penetration test and review that integrations with other applications or systems are working. In the end, after the deploy, the system is ready for data copy and sync, is ready for ingestion, and to and ready for performing a swap later. In most cases, what takes the most time is making sure that all integrations are working well, because there may be many applications connecting to, to the solution. Um, so let's now switch to data copy. And here we got three different scenarios. So um, the complexity of the data copy really depends on the system we're loading, loading from. The size of the data um, that we need to move and the channel for, for moving the data. Uh, we need to consider bandwidth, reliability, and security uh, when moving the data. And sometimes we may need a very fast connection or other mechanisms I'm not going to be covering today. Um, so then it's about where, uh, from what system are we migrating from? The easiest one is the one in the middle. If we're using open search or elastic search, we can uh, um, restore a snapshot. In the left, we may build in from the source. So this could be Oracle, SQL Server, or any system. And on the right, we may be loading from an existing log analytics and search solution. So uh, if we are building from the source, uh, this is uh, uh, we're loading from building from business systems or repositories. Uh, the Open Search API is expecting a JSON, so we need to collect the data in JSON format or convert to JSON. Sometimes we need to aggregate the log data, and we may be connecting to relational databases such as Oracle, SQL Server, Aurora, uh, from NoSQL, uh, from the file system, from object stores, or from other uh, formats such as Parquet. Um, if we are uh, if we are moving data from uh, from the source, sometimes we have uh, connectors and we can use uh, FluentD, Logstacks, OpenSearch, integration services or data prepper. We can also use Glue or any ETL tool we may have or may or build our own code. So we may need to end up doing some code development and run it on, on EC2. Uh, if, um, if we are moving from Elastic or Open Search, in some cases, it's as easy as taking a snapshot of your current on-prem or self-managed Elastic Search and then restore it in Open Search. If this is the case, our recommendation is to re-index when the snapshots are restored. So uh, plan for the CPU needed for restoring and then uh, re-indexing in order to go live. If you are migrating from other log analytics solutions, you may be reading from these solutions. Um, 
and you can create your custom code and run it in EC2 to move data or a serverless Lambda uh, function. You can also use AWS Glue or also some plugins out there such as Logstacks. And uh, uh, when connecting to an existing engine, you gotta make sure that you're able to uh, connect to the existing engine by uh, having the right security permissions, networking, and authorization, so you're able to perform the the data load. Once you loaded the data, um, in some cases, these systems, the new system and the old system, are gonna be working in parallel. Okay, so um, and sometimes that's not the case. So it also depend, depends on the case, on the use case. If it's log analytics, we may be able to run both systems side by side, having both systems ingesting data, and then later on backfill the prior data. If it's search, ingestion may need to be stopped then run some type of CDC chain data capture mechanism to backfill the changes to then start ingesting again. So it really depends on your source systems, your SLA, and if they allow you to have change the capture or if you can run ingestion in parallel. So here, each scenario is, is different. And then um, once you're done with your, um, and with the whole process and you're ready to do the final swap, uh, once we're here, we have ingestion and uh, uh, we check the integrations with other systems are working and that uh, this step may require some changes to the applications, some updates to the applications. So the front end applications are connecting to the new system. Sometimes that includes a DNS swap. And uh, just in case, always uh, good to have a, a rollback plan in case you're not having the old and the new system uh, working in parallel. So um, to wrap up, and we talk about uh, many different things, let's uh, review some of them. The main reason why customers are migrating is because functionality in open search, price performance in the managed service, management and scalability, and security, no particular order. And during this session, you saw a six step process for migrations, very high level, but uh, I hope with this, you have a, a good overview. So uh, thank you. And uh, let's now see some customer stories from Mission Cloud. Uh, Krishna? Uh, I'm gonna just step in real quick there, Francisco. We do have a couple of more questions. Um, one is, uh, is there a plan for open search to offer semantic search in the near future? Uh, yes, um, so the, there is a feature already for semantic search and the roadmap is public, so you may be able to know more about what is coming. So if you go to opensearch.org, you can see the open source community project. Okay, so, and you can also, I mean, you can see the open source, open source community project and see the roadmap. So uh, to answer your question, the answer is yes, there is some semantic search capabilities coming. And then if you wanna know more about the roadmap, uh, I said is, is public. Excellent, um, and just one last question here. Um, what's the best approach to extract data from open search in real time? Well, there is an API. I mean, there are many different approaches. It really depends on the use case. So uh, you got a SQL connector, so you can write SQL queries. Uh, there are some plugins, plugins that provide you with real time, connecting in real time. Uh, there is an API, an endpoint that you can use for your customer if you're integrating a customer solution. Uh, in 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 Open Search dashboards, you can see uh, real time data in the dashboards. So there are many different scenarios and uh, real time is a common use case for open search. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, great information, thank you. You're welcome.
All right. Uh, thank you, Francisco. I'll talk a little bit about the search challenge that uh, mission customers have faced while they're visitors and how uh, we're going to talk about some of the use cases that we have implemented at mission uh, from mission to our customers. So major challenges we have been uh, here, hearing um, was uh, with the real time application monitoring, that the usual tools are very uh, complex to set up, manage and scale. And then the complex data analytics, which are which includes like usage of uh, uh, ML comp computing models and all search on the data. And then the main other uh, uh, challenge here was like uh, from we have heard was like full text indexing, which is uh, uh, querying data with full text search capabilities and such. Um, so from here, I'm going to talk about some of the use cases. Uh, that we have uh, at mission implemented as part of the migration or moving customers from other search platforms into open search. This is one of the use case uh, that we are currently implementing for uh, a customer of Piping Rock where the need or the use case was to centralize all the infrastructure in one account and then have the capabilities to monitor and with the real time log capabilities and then if it, and the efficiency and the cost was one of their uh, uh, key uh, in as part of this uh, implementation. So which is where uh, uh, mission came up with the use case where uh, with the implementation for this use case was to using the data stream in, uh, instead of creating a lot of indices. So that way the data stream, since the use case was purely based on the time series data, such as designing primarily for append only data and making sure um, it, it, for each and every documented timestamp field being attached and such. And, and the other thing was the, the cost and the, how the cluster being set up and how the defaulting, uh, how the index has been used for defaulted and the, how the replica works and then using the, uh, using few to uh, the max number of the shards here. So which is where we, we had defaulted the use of uh, indexes to use the first five and the one replica and then and then using the 10 in 10 shards by the index in total. And then at the same time, using the data stream on the IMS, ISM to create and handle the needed indices only. So which is where uh, the ISM, which is the index state management, which helps in rollover, and then delete some of the indices, which are after a, pre, after a certain period of the time, uh, which I'm going to show right here. This is one of the cases where with one of the time-based data, where if you see on the left, uh, the one in red is something needs to be deleted because that is beyond the time period which been set up to roll over and get deleted, which is where the, this indexes, the ISM gonna be uh, po policy on the right, if you see the rollover based on the index and the number of document, documents specific to those. And then the first, the two and three, we make them read only and then the latest one, the number four is the right and red index, which is the latest. And this purely based on the time-based data. And the benefits of, of this is to centralize, or uh, like I was talking about, centralize all infrastructure in, into one account. So which means making sure the data collection, and then since all this data coming off of CloudWatch, so setting up the CloudWatch filter, and then making sure the cost is in place by setting up the one data stream, and within which a Lambda function to process all the messages instead of having a, one Lambda, a lambda function for each and every account to process it and and in this phase all the logs which are being filtered out being sent to a fire or something deploying all changes only in one account rather than having the complexity and go ahead and doing all this in many different accounts rather do the collection and such and then the other thing is since the usage of lambda is there along with open source so setting the soft limit of thousand to avoid any issues regarding Lambda throttling and such. And similarly, S3 being the data storage and to maintain the history data so that uh, the same data coming off of the search could be queried at the history basis. And one of the main thing, like I was mentioning, which is the efficient use of the open search resources, which is uh, maintaining the open search cluster, which is uh, being the managed service and managing the data for a certain period of the time, which is more like, let's say six months of data. And the other one, like I was talking about the ISM to roll over the index or deletion of the historical data. 
which were the benefits and the outcome that customer and the mission had brought in for this specific use case. Similarly, I have a couple other use cases. One of them was uh, Writable. Writable is more of like an application that helps schools organize their writing programs around uh, research back and instruction feedback. So here the use case was to improve the data indexing with the capabilities and the functionalities and, and the benefits coming off of the open search. So within which uh, there, there are challenges with the log data, with the, with the resources and difficult for the company to trace the application performance back and then have the monitoring, alerting at, the, at, at scale. So which has caused them to have leading to some log, logistical headaches and inefficiency when dealing with the customer service issues and such. Because being uh, having or maintaining all this information and then proper uh, design and such uh, along with the open search and at the same time the, co the customer service being their major uh, impact. Uh, so they reached us reached to mission and then we, we help them understand uh, how it's going to get resolved uh, and turning and their architecture in that incorporator around open source to pull the data into one single index. And this is how as part of the architecture so like containerizing the logs and then sending them to CloudWatch and then making sure uh, we help our customers understand and specific to this customer understand what Lambda would be doing it while it is integrated with the open search and then making sure a customer reach uh, their outcomes by and, and, and writable have now all the data being pulled into one unified index and making it easier for them to help proactively discover and analyze any of their application issues. And then at the same time, we were able to help them add on with the audit capabilities, which is something that wasn't there and we had made it, made a change for them. And then now Writable is able to respond to their customer issues much faster and then discover any new and then improvise their products and application much better. And the other use case, which is part of this uh, specific to the migration uh, and how does it's gonna look like if someone wanna migrate from Elasticsearch to OpenSearch. So this use case uh, is specific to Jebit, who had the data collection majorly happening from the consumer data platform from all the quizzes and such. So, so their main goal is to have the reduced cost, much scalability and advanced feature that open search is operating and within uh, the Amazon uh, cloud. Using the search capabilities on the data indexing and generating the personalized recommendations was their goal. And then at the same time, they wanted to, the, the use case was to have the supporting the provide uh, and provide valuable marketing data here. So the approach uh, we take in implementing any of the migrating uh, migration use cases uh, specific to open source and in general is like something we go in five different phases. Uh, when I say phases like streamline within one implementation, which is a discovery phase to analyze the current design workloads, architecture end to end to understand and get in, and deep dive into the customer environment. And second, and the infrastructure, and secondly, the design and establishing the guidelines and then making sure the, the AWS services and standards are met for the migration in terms of security or operations and such. And when it comes to the implementation, we, that's where specific to open search, we kind of deal with uh, open search clusters and then DNS records, connections, Kibana dashboard configuration, which are pretty much pretty main things in terms of uh, moving from one source service to other and specifically to open search. And once that implementation is done, then the next phase is to have validate, which is including the testing and validation of the application connection recovery process. And at the same time, making sure the new environment and the applications are driven uh, are operationalized and the metrics are defined by the performance and to ensure the data is flowing efficiently. Uh, and I'll talk a little about uh, more about the discovery and how mission operates in, in terms of the discovery phase. So like I was stating, it's more from the reviewing the existing uh, AWS environment in terms of infrastructure, application systems, and the accounts, and then under the design and the overall architecture. And then we come up with a assessment with certain documentation and the details for designing and implementation of this particular 
project or, or this migration in terms of uh, the implementation. And then making sure we meet the business driven data requirements, which are all been covered in the discovery phase. Secondly is the design. In the design phase, we, we uncover what's the most useful thing for each pieces of the pipeline, whether it is setting up the data sources, more and more data sources, or is it more making the data available or setting up the real time on application monitoring and all those kind of um, design bits and pieces will be uh, uh, uncovered and such. And determining the services needed to integrate around AWS uh, open search and then reviewing the open source security posture to harden according to the business requirement. And then designing for the performance driven by the business needs as, as the, there shouldn't be any performance, rather we need to scaling up in terms of performance and dealing with the reducing the issues or, or completely uh, making this operationalized. Third phase is the implementation. In terms of the implementation, and this is and this is specific to migrating suppose from uh, uh, op, uh, migrating to open source from the Elasticsearch. So, if, if you see the st steps involved in this migration, it's pretty straightforward and given within few uh, few days few days and weeks of time, we were able to establish this implementation for for our customers, and it involves creating a open source cluster specific to a region and then applying the re-indexing to, to the new cluster to make to ensure and validate the data integrity. And then the third one is more of exporting the Kibana dashboard configuration from suppose from if it is if it is from Elastic Core or Elastic uh, either open source or the Amazon Elastic Search. So loading them into the new open source cluster Kibanas. And then the the next one is to making sure uh, the, there are new DNS records of creator and which are which map which were currently mapping to the old cluster. Suppose let's say one cluster is in US and the other one is in EU, EU region. So making sure that these DNS records are mapped back now and then deploying the updated uh, DNS based connections string to the existing application and making sure uh, the DNS record point now to the open source cluster. And then once this is uh, been uh, DNS based connection being configured uh, and then the next step is to making sure run the uh, running the re-indexing scripts on the new clusters. So once if you see this quite simple uh, implementation pretty straightforward by making the open search uh, uh, migration into open search and then when it comes to validation phase there are only a few things which needs to be validated which is verifying testing and verifying the application connection to the new cluster and making sure test and validate the recovery process and then once those two are complete just you just need to retire the elastic clusters elastic search clusters uh, any questions i could answer otherwise i'll give it to marty We're going to talk about the next steps. Thanks, Krishna. No questions at the moment. Um, okay. You can uh, go to the next slide. All right. So there's a bunch of resources that are out there, right? There's um, AWS open search blogs, uh, product documentation, and there's online workshops. If there's anything that you guys want to go and learn about there, out there, um, AWS offers a lot of excellent resources for you to be able to go out and get. Um, go ahead with the next slide. So, you know, with Mission, you know, and AWS, there's a couple different things, right? There's this whole idea of data-driven everything, right? You know, data is amazing. Um, and then, you know, there's these AWS data labs where you're able to do some joint engagements between AWS and technical resources. We also do this with Mission. Um, you're able to get together with uh, Mission and work through uh, what it is that you want to be doing as data, uh, with data and open search. And we're able to sit down and kind of architect that out and work with you. Um, there's, a, you know, data labs that you can do with us and um, AWS. Um, there is a question that came in, um, if you could, Krishna, what's the difference um, in complexity in migration from Amazon Elasticsearch to open search? Uh, oh, I think we, yeah, I open think search versus kind of... open source um, Elasticsearch to open search. Um, if you could uh, 
take that question yeah, real sure. quick. Sure. In terms of the migration, uh, it is pretty straightforward as open search, uh, open source Elastic uh, on the Amazon Elastic are pretty similar as as in when uh, the current Elastic search is up to date on like I was sharing earlier, the migration steps, it's more of setting up the new clusters in the in the respective region and then the DNS and then uh, re-indexing and then uh, and pointing to the new DNS connections and then uh, the Kibana dashboards and then making sure uh, that we are able to connect and search and then just retiring the elastic, whether it is on open search or on Amazon. Excellent. Um, thanks, Krishna. Um, if you could move on to the next slide. So with Mission, I mean, we're here uh, to help you with any of these sorts of migrations or any sorts of implementation with open search. Um, there's, you know, offers going on uh, currently where you'd be able to come with, you know, come and work with us and you can, you know, when you go and move to open search, uh, you're able to get, you know, 10% off, you know, your AWS contractor resources. And if you, you know, sign on with our um, MSB agreements and things like that, uh, you can save at least 5% off your AWS spend if you come and work with Mission. Um, next slide, please. And we have a free 60 minute assessment. And really what this is, is it's sitting down and talking about what your end in mind is for anything to do with open search or really anything to do with data in general. Um, but we're able to sit down uh, with, uh, with you, walk through what it is at a high level that you're trying to architect, and then give you some solutions on how to move forward with that. Um, you know, if with mission or without mission, however that might be. Uh, but we're really, you know, we're here uh, to help. So if you have any uh, current needs that you have with Open Search, uh, Mission is here to help you out. Yep, uh, Melissa can send a link in the chat uh, in the GoToWebinar for folks to schedule their uh, consultation if they have question about migration cost or optimization or cloud security or data analytics or modernizing on AWS. No matter what specific cloud question this Mission team. Uh, with the AWS certified solution architects is here to uh, like provide expertise, guidance, and support. And the solution uh, architects on demand consult can help you with discovering the issues, making sure uh, validate your project plans, and gather insights on search and the map solutions to identify any opportunities to reduce your costs, boost efficiency, and streamline your operations. And at the same time, uh, Mission in collaboration with uh, partnering with AWS, leverage best practices, build a roadmap maps based on the five pillars of the AWS well-architected review. Uh, 